Based on this data, if you fly a Starfighter, yes, you're going to have an incident much sooner than with many other aircraft. But interestingly, you also have a higher chance of survival, which seems paradoxical, but doesn't have to be. Let me explain. This episode follows the video on the F-35's crashes I made about a year ago. Many of you had two comments. First, you were surprised about how few accidents we have nowadays compared to the 1950s, 60s and 70s. But the second comment was, where is the F-104 Starfighter in all of this? After all, the F-104 is infamous for its accident rate, or shall we say for now, its reputation for accidents. Well, the data I have sourced comes straight from the USAF. They didn't include the Starfighter. On their website, you won't find data on this. Is that going to stop me? No. If there is data and your homeboy wants it, he'll find it. Better luck next time, Air Force, because I found what I need. So let's get into this. This episode is sponsored by War Thunder. Let's pull up the old data and compare it with the Starfighter. For the start, we will only look at the United States Air Force, but I'll extend it to other countries as well. I'll talk more about the sources at the end of the video. Let's compare the total number of accidents resulting in a destroyed aircraft and the total number of aircrew deaths. Some planes may be skewed in one way or the other due to a higher comparative loss ratio in conflicts, looking at you F-86 Sabre and F or Phantom, but there is no way to account for that right now. The numbers in themselves don't tell us that much, but what we can do is calculate the average chance of a destroyed aircraft also resulting in an aircrew's death. Here we can see the lower this number, the lower the mathematical chance that an accident with a destroyed aircraft results in a death. First surprise, the Starfighter is doing remarkably well, comparatively speaking. So, Starfighter, not great, not terrible. Well, this data doesn't tell us more than is really shown. The statistical chance of a destroyed aircraft also having a dead crew member. What we need to do now to get a better sense of safety is account for flight hours. And that's how you get really the information on the reliability of aircraft across their operational use. Problem, the USAF didn't publish the flight hours for the Starfighter. Solution? They're sent into the depths of the USAF documents, manually pull statistical data year by year, link and separate variants of Starfighter, recalculate flight hours over quarters, compare program over actual flight hours, cross examine multiple years, triple check changes in statistical methodologies that changed for about four times across the Starfighter's lifespan, and eliminate data contamination of foreign training programs. Yeah. I make it seem dramatic. It's actually very easy when you know what you want to do. It's just busy work. Well, here are the results. Based on the original USAF data, here we can see flight hours that must elapse statistically for each plane to have an accident in which it is destroyed. You can see how the hours have steadily risen across your platforms. And now I add the F-104 Starfighter based on new USAF data. You can see we are starting to have an issue. Compared to Century Series contemporaries, it does worse having less than half the flight hours per destroyed airframe than the Voodoo. The only plane that is worse is the F-86 Sabre. The same trend occurs once we look at aircrew fatalities. Here the F-104 Starfighter does the worst. This data points more towards the popular reputation that the F-104 then has. Although the ratio of destroyed to aircrew fatalities is comparatively lower than some of the other aircraft we have seen, once those numbers are compared to flight hours, the picture really changes. There is a follow-up check we can do here. Let's look at only the first 10 years of flight hours and incident numbers, right? Because generally speaking, the accident ratio goes down after the initial years of uh, service of an aircraft as the kinks in the aircraft are overcome and air and maintenance crews are much more familiar with the aircraft. For the Starfighter, it wasn't in the USA for much longer than a decade, but let's see what this data says for now. You can see that indeed the flight hours per destroyed aircraft go up in all cases, but only marginally so for the Starfighter. 
Most likely this is because only a few years are added on top of the initial 10 years until the F-104 is retired in the USAF. What about aircrew fatalities? Again, the increase is there, but statistically it is marginal. A better increase than the Sabre though. Sometimes it's just the little things. Another source that shows reliability is the number of Class A incidents per engine flight hours. Here the F-104's J-79 has an incredibly high Class A ratio compared to other aircraft engines. Note that this data may also include non-USAF F-104s, but I'm just not sure on that point. Putting this together then, with the initial data on destroyed airframes versus aircrew deaths, we can now say this. Based on this data, if you fly a Starfighter, yes, you're going to have an incident much sooner than with many other aircraft, but interestingly, you also have a higher chance of survival, which seems paradoxical, but doesn't have to be. But now you say, hang on, Chris, we have only looked at the USAF. What about all those, all those other countries that flew the 104? Spain, Italy, Greece, Canada. Well, that's actually the CF-104, but let's be specific here. But Denmark, Turkey, Germany, and so on. Surely the German case must be bad, but not just the Germans, right? You can see the Starfighter everywhere in the world, in documentaries, in museums, on the internet, in that game War Thunder. Yes, I got it in there, smooth as butter, as always. In War Thunder, you can experience exciting, intense air, land, and naval battles. The game is completely free to play and features more than 2,000 playable aircraft, helicopters, and those unimportant targets known as tanks and ships. You can experience flying the most legendary World War II era aircraft and then transition over into the Cold War and even contemporary jets. And yes, the F-104 is in War Thunder and available to play among many different nations. The US, Germany, Italy, Taiwan, Turkey. Although not the Belgian one, which considering the data is probably a good thing. Just fly the Japanese one, you'll be fine. Of course, you can also drive tanks and ships, and in War Thunder's popular mixed battle experience, you can drive around in a tank and then also fly around in an aircraft in helicopters, making the tankies cry in fear every time you swoop in for deadly air support. War Thunder is constantly evolving, adding new tanks, ships, and of course, the most important of all, new aircraft in continuous updates. And the game features full cross-platform integration between PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Sign up for free and get a sign-up bonus with a free premium vehicle, boosters, and an exclusive channel logo. All you need to do is hit up that link in the description below and you are off to a flying start. What about the other countries then? Well, based on the Aviation Safety Network's website, there were just under 1,200 major incidents of Starfighters doing something. And about 1,000 destroyed 104s with about 360 fatalities. Yes, I had to go through all of them. It's what I do. If we look at the ratio of major incidents to dead aircrew, we can see some surprising numbers. Next to the Blanco we have for Spain during their short period of operating the Starfighter, the lowest ratio belongs to Taiwan, Japan and Jordan. Then we have Canada, Germany, Pakistan and the US of A. Yes, Germany is only midfield here. Upwards we go to the Netherlands, Greece, Turkey, Italy and Denmark. By now we are statistically at the point where in 50% of incidents there has been an air crew fatality. After this we have Norway and finally Belgium. Note that these numbers may include some minor variants from other sources. Let's take Japan, Germany and Belgium to have a low, mid and high ratio. Taking into account force structure here, Germany had 916 F-104 Starfighters. That means it lost 33% of Starfighters, of which 36% resulted in the death of aircrew. Thus, mathematically speaking, roughly 12% of German Starfighters had an incident in which the aircrew also died. For Japan and Belgium, the numbers are the following. Based on this, we can have additional confidence in saying that even though Japan has a higher number of incidents than Belgium, based on operationally available numbers, it does far better in terms of incidents and fatalities. Bringing the US back into the game brings us another interesting comparison. It has a higher incident to available airframe ratio than the other countries compared here, 
but it has a midfield incident to death ratio with a comparable probability ratio to Germany in the end. Now it is time to look at flight hours across countries and this is where I run into a problem. Few countries actually publish data as readily as the United States. The US is actually really awesome for data transparency in such cases. You know, at least those countries whose language I speak don't do that with the Starfighter. And I do prefer using official sources that I can check myself rather than, you know, what sometimes someone else wrote without then linking to the actual primary source where they drew their data from that I can verify and so on. So my call to action is to you right now. If you live in a country that is on this list and know where to find publicly, publicly accessible open source data, let me say that again, publicly accessible open source data that can be accessed legally from each Air Force on Starfighter Flight Hour, let me know. You know, social media links or to contact me are on in the description. Remember, open source, open source data, please. I said at the start that I'll make a quick excursion on the sources I used in this video so you know where the data comes from and what potential pitfalls there are. After all, statistical data can give us a lot of information or misinformation if we aren't careful. There are five things, well, maybe six things, that you must take into account when looking at this data and I'm gonna put those briefly here and I'll have them in the pinned comment as well. Go over them in your own time. Right, that brings me to the end of this video. Let me know what you learned and if the data that I presented to you confirms what you thought, if it made it worse, if it made it better for the Starfighter in your opinion. And big thank you here also to Andrew as well as all Patreons and channel members, and of course also Wolfwonder for sponsoring this episode. And as always, have a great day and see you in the sky.